The common Placostomus is one of those fish that you see absolutely everywhere, and in my opinion, they are one of the most misunderstood fish in the entire hobby. So let's get to it. Here are 10 things you need to know about the common Pleco. Placostomus, or Placos, as we'll call them in this video, are found in freshwater streams and rivers in South America. But these days, you can find them in many other places. And this is what John will talk about later. They are nocturnal catfish that so many newcomers to the fish keeping hobby will call algae eaters. But as we'll talk about in this video, they're much more than that. One of the coolest things about a common placo is that their scales seem to form like a natural armor to them. If you ever touch them, then you know they're hard and stiff, very rough-like, unlike a lot of the fish you'll find in the hobby. There's tons of different placos out there. I've read there's like over 150. Obviously, we can't cover all of them in one video, especially when there's so many drastic differences. I'll put a few different types on the screen. Some of these are absolutely gorgeous. For today's 10 things list, we're gonna focus on the common placo, or the Hippostomus placostomus. This fish is referred to as the common placo because, well, it's the most common. They're everywhere. You'll see them in every pet store you go to and almost every fish keeping YouTube channel that you watch. It's one of those fish you hear about almost as soon as you start the hobby. You might as well get used to them. We're going to do a segment in just a little bit about how big these fish get. And spoiler alert, they get huge. Too many people make the mistake of putting these catfish that get huge in a small 20 or 30 gallon tank. Just don't do it. We're going to show you pictures in a minute of how big these fish get. So just wait. If you're entertaining the idea of getting a common pleco, do the right thing and put them in a minimum of a six foot tank. Don't argue with me. A six foot tank. I mean it. Okay, fine. If you have a four foot tank and you want to get a common pleco, go ahead, but only if you know that you're going to be upgrading your tank to a six foot tank down the road. Then I won't yell at you. When you go to the pet store to buy food for your Placos, you're going to find several different kinds of food for them, and they're made specifically for them. The most common will be your algae wafers. Algae wafers are great because Placos typically love them and they're a great source of fiber and protein. But just know that Placos usually will eat anything that you throw in the tank. Placos are nocturnal, so they'll do a lot of scavenging for food when the lights are off. They'll pick up uneaten food by your other fish, and they won't be picky about it. If you want to have some fun the next time you make a salad, slice up some zucchini or cucumber and throw it in there with them, they'll go crazy over it. The common pleco is a fish that you can find in almost every pet store on the planet. You're usually going to find them in the two, three, maybe four inch range. But understand folks, these are babies. You'll hear us say multiple times in this video that plecos are catfish. And if there's one thing I know for certain about catfish, it's that they grow very fast. But how big do these things get? Well, rather than talk to you about it, why don't we take a look at some photos that I just pulled off the internet and maybe that'll tell the story. Yeah, they can get pretty big, about 24 inches. So for God's sakes, don't put these fish in a 20 gallon tank. Just do the right thing. And for a little bit more on this, I'm gonna turn this over to one of my friends that is a heavy hitter in the Pleco world. What is up y'all? I'm Jeff Rowe with Jeff Rowe's Fish Keeping. One of the most important things you need to know before you purchase a common pleco is, will you keep it forever? Sometimes we forget as responsible hobbyists 
to go into every fish purchase with this question. Because believe it or not, with this common pleco, what happens most of the time is it ends up getting returned to the pet store where it was purchased at two foot long and nobody wants it. My suggestion is do your research. There's tons of plecos out there, all shapes, colors, and sizes. With a little bit of research, I'm sure you'll find a pleco that you can bring home and give a forever home to. I know a lot of people that breed Placos and they keep Placos only and nothing else. But I've never met anyone that bred the common Placo. My guess is because they would require such a large tank to do it. And again, they're called the common Placo for a reason. They're everywhere. Plus, when you go to the pet store and you can buy a Placo that's six inches long for $5, it's kind of hard to justify everything you have to put into breeding them. But if you're interested in breeding Placos, just know that they like to breed in caves. The female, she'll go in the cave, she'll lay hundreds of eggs. The male will follow and then fertilize the eggs. Afterwards, he protects the cave. He guards the cave and watches over the eggs and the fry. And that's pretty much it. But if you want to breed Placos, I would suggest going with some of the smaller, more difficult to find species like bristlenose. You won't need a huge tank and they won't be as hard to get rid of and maybe make a few dollars. Don't expect to get rich though. In over 25 years of fish keeping and even owning my own store a few years ago, it's no exaggeration for me to say I've kept hundreds of plecos and I have always known them to be one of the hardiest fish in the hobby. These fish are practically bulletproof. In fact, I'll tell you a little story. I had a friend lose interest in this hobby a long time ago. He gave away all of his fish, unplugged everything, and just let his tank sit there in his bedroom. About six months goes by, the water had evaporated down to about that far, and he started hearing weird noises coming from the tank. It sounded like splashing. He assumed that it was his cats messing with the water, but no, it was the pleco that he forgot to give away with his other fish six months earlier. We were kids. The fish lived in his tank with no circulation, no light, no filter, no food, nothing for six months. And when he pulled that fish out of the tank, it was just as plump and happy and fat as could be. Now, I'm not saying that this is okay. He actually felt really bad about this, and he set the tank back up again, got everything running, and that fish actually lived for several more years. What I'm saying is that these fish can tolerate a lot, and they're not overly picky about the water parameters. You should still do the right thing, make sure you have a big enough tank, keep the water clean, give them plenty of current, some caves and stuff like that to hide in, and plenty of good food. Don't rely on these fish only eating algae. Placos are catfish, which means they'll eat almost anything they can fit in their mouth, even small fish. So use some common sense. They generally won't hunt other fish, but if they get large enough and there are smaller fish in a tank and they have the opportunity, I've kept Placos in community tanks, African cichlid tanks, and tanks with arowanas, and I've never had any problems with them. You might wake up one morning and you have a dead fish in your tank, and you notice that your Placo is attached to this dead fish, just chomping away at it. Don't panic and blame your Placo for this. What most likely happened is that your fish just died for whatever reason, and your Placo took the opportunity to just get a little extra food. Yes, it could have been the Placo that killed your fish, but most likely not. I know, for most people in this hobby, algae is a huge nuisance. You do everything you can do to get rid of it and it keeps coming back and you think that a common Pleco is the answer for that. Just wait a second. 
If there is a buildup of algae in your aquarium, there's a reason for that. It could be that you're not keeping up with your aquarium maintenance, you're not cleaning out your filter, it could be you're leaving your lights on too long, or maybe it's sitting right next to a window that's letting all of that sunlight come in, which is causing your big algae bloom. There's literally hundreds of things that could be causing the algae problem. Fix the problem rather than using a fish to do your job for you. Don't be lazy. But I know that sometimes it's unavoidable. I've been there. You try everything and it just keeps coming back. Well, depending on what kind of tank you have, what size it is, and what kind of fish you keep, there might actually be better options out there for helping to keep algae under control than the common pleco. If the common pleco isn't gonna work for you because your tank is too small or whatever, try the Chinese algae eaters or maybe even the autosynclus. These are some really cool fish and they do a great job. It's been my belief for as long as I've been in this hobby that the common Placostomus is one of the most mistreated fish in the entire hobby. I could even make the argument that it shouldn't even be in this hobby. And I've got one in one of my tanks. So many of the people that buy them do it for the wrong reasons and they completely disregard how awesome this fish really is. They buy them as tank cleaners or worker fish thinking they'll be able to do less work and the fish will pick up the slack. They also buy them having no clue how big these things can get. Again, completely disregarding the needs of the fish. But then the fish outgrows the tank and they do one of two things. Either leave it in the small tank to live a miserable existence, or they do something even worse like setting it free in the nearest lake or river. You're saying to yourself, well, that's not a big deal. I mean, they'll be happier there than in my little tank. Well, that's true, but it's not the plecos that I'm worried about. It's everything else. My friend Steve Poland did a great video all about this and how it's become a huge problem down in Florida. These plecos are even threatening the manatee population down there. Check out the video. It'll blow your mind. Look, if you're looking to buy a pleco because you need help cleaning your tank, don't. If you want to get a pleco, but you only have a 29 gallon tank, don't. If you want to get one because they're an absolutely fascinating fish and you have the right amount of space to accommodate them, then go for it because these really are some awesome fish. There you go, 10 things you need to know about play codes. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see 10 more things, then stop by next Sunday and we'll have 10 more things or you could subscribe and just get that notification.